Hi everyone, uh, this is a podcast video uh, and in this video I want to talk about flying face and why I like it. So first of all, what is flying face? Well, flying face is an Instagram filter game. Yes, game, not a mask, not an effect, a game. Uh, and it plays uh, similar to uh, Flappy Bird. If you know this game, it's a mobile game released for iOS and Android and there are many different variations of it already released uh, even on the web. And uh, it's a very difficult game where the goal is to try to get the highest score by controlling a little bird. Uh, we control its uh, movement along the vertical um, axis. And there are also pillars uh, where there is a gap between the pillars and it's up to you to maneuver the bird correctly so we can pass through it and not collide with the pillar. You have, you have only one health and if you fail, it's game over. And of course, the, the goal here is to try to get the highest score possible. Now, this filter was developed by Dvoshansky, uh, Instagram.com slash Dvoshansky. I'm going to put a link in the description uh, to the developer of this uh, filter so you can follow the developer. And when you follow the developer, you're going to unlock this filter in your Instagram drawer and you can try the game yourself. Now, let me start by saying that I remember playing Flappy Bird a long time ago and I didn't like it. Why? because, I don't know, it was so hard. I think the reason it was so hard, and uh, after a few tries, I told myself, no, this is too hard. I just, I, I couldn't play with it. I mean, I think I got like two or three score, and uh, I was really, really bad. Yeah, I was that bad. And eventually, I just told myself to stop. The next day that I woke up, I, I wanted to break my score, so I tried playing again, and eventually, I became quite addicted to this game. I mean, the original game, Flappy Bird. Now, this game is very similar. The gameplay is the same, but the big difference here is instead of tapping the screen in order to control the character, uh, you control it using blinking. You just blink with your eyes, and when you blink, the character moves uh, up a little bit, and in order to maintain flight, because the bird always, gravity always takes place, so if you stop blinking, or in case of the original game, you stop tapping, uh, the bird would just fall down and then if it reaches the bottom, uh, it collides with the bottom, it's game over. So the same goes here. Instead of tapping, you need to blink, blink, blink and blink. Now this is funny, right? Because you need your eyes in order to see what you are doing. And when you blink, you can actually, you know, you only for, for a split of a second, you lose sight, right? Uh, but when you blink a lot, you know, you can get kind of uh, like uh, a flickery gameplay experience. At least it was for me like that. And sometimes even, you know, I lost uh, concentration for a short period of time, a split of a second, and it was enough for me to uh, just not noticing that the pillars, where the pillars are uh, located, I mean, sorry, the gap is located, and fail. Now, the game can be played alone, and you can also play cooperatively with another person. You can even make it competitively, you know, but the, when you play, I actually tried it a few minutes ago, when you play with another person, another bird will appear on the screen. Now, both of you are playing, so uh, if one of the player um, uh, collides and fail, the other player can continue playing. So you can make it kind of a, a mutual effort, where both of you try to uh, hang on as much as possible, and uh, as long as one player is still alive, uh, the game continues, and then you get the highest score. Uh, but you can also make it competitively, like you're playing both of you and the one who just, uh, you know, uh, managed to continue and play. And the other, when the other one fails, uh, the other player wins. I mean, this is also a possibility. So you can decide if you make it competitively or cooperatively uh, gameplay. Now, the other thing is uh, that you can actually see your face on top of your um, uh, bird. So instead of seeing, you know, the the bird's face, uh, you know, in a you know three D model, uh, your face, your actual face, is put on the bird itself, which is nice. It's cool. Uh, this is because it's an Instagram filter, and you're using the front camera. The front camera uh, sees your face, and it uses Spark AR, so it can capture your face and you know replicate it and put it uh, everywhere. In this case, it just positioned um, as the bird's face. Now, one of the things that I actually found missing uh, is that there isn't any uh, global leaderboard. And it would be nice, right? Because just imagine how many people play the game and then uh, 
if you want to compare, for example, uh, your score against those of uh, you know, all the people who use this filter from all around the world, uh, you can't. Actually, there is a way. So the cool thing about this game is that uh, uh, when people want to compare the high score, uh, what they do, not, not just compare, they want to show off their high score, what do you do? They share their gameplay video online. And that's what people do. Uh, I actually watch uh, YouTube and I already see some many, many videos of people on, also on Instagram, both Instagram, YouTube, and probably other social networks where people show a gameplay uh, of the highest score, which is cool. Now, of course, there are some that will try to find out what is the highest score, but it's kind of an old school gaming where you actually search the internet for people uh, uploading evidence of the highest score. You know, like, uh, for example, I saw a game of Doom in a, one level that uh, one person was able to beat uh, uh, the best timing. Uh, it was kind of a, a record that uh, was there for 20 years or something. So they upload a video. Same here. Uh, people upload videos of the best score. Uh, and uh, other players who are kind of addicted to this game and try to be the best of the best would probably search for it on YouTube, I, I assume, or Instagram. I think it could be really cool. Although YouTube is very easy. I can just write, for example, flying face, best score, a world record, you know, all those keywords and, and try to find uh, people who really did good with this game. Now you can see what's happening. I mean, tons of people are sharing their gameplay and this can become, you know, can come viral and, and you know, you suddenly see hundreds, thousands, even even more videos of people uh, showing the best score. And this is fun because this type of game where instead of, and this is important, Instead of seeing uh, a gameplay, you know, recorded, like only the game itself, you see the people playing the game. And this is one of the big differences. Uh, and one of the things that I was so excited because when I saw those videos on Instagram, YouTube, you can actually see the players playing. It's amazing. Just think about it. It's a game we can actually see all the other players playing and you don't need to record the game or have a camera recording their face. The game is played in a way, it's a selfie game, basically. So there, there are many games that I'm not so enthusiastic about, so I'm kind of boring to see uh, people just playing the game or just for score. Here it's actually quite interesting, it's very interesting actually, where you can actually see all the people who are playing. Uh, this is fun, this is a fun experience. And one of the things that, uh, you know, first of all, I told myself, uh, there's no high score, I'll go by leaderboard. Oh, actually, I won't go by leaderboard. But the fact here is that you can actually see many people sharing videos of them playing uh, Flying Face and sharing their best score in the game. And I'm sure they're going to continue and uploading more videos because they're going to break their record in the next day or even a few minutes later. And they're going to upload the video, share it on Instagram, share it on YouTube, Facebook. Um, and it's going to be like, you know, tons of video of this game. And of course, it's going to lead to higher popularity, it's already very popular, it's going to be even more. So regarding, another thing regarding uh, availability on Facebook, uh, as of the time of making this video, uh, <laughs> I did try to um, uh, run this as a Facebook effect. Uh, what I did is just copy the URL and, re and replace the number uh, of this, um, of the Instagram uh, filter ID and put it in the Facebook URL but it didn't work for me. So what I assume is that uh, the developer published it only for Instagram and not Facebook. I continue playing and uh, although I, for some time of blinking, uh, you know, people uh, blinking a lot, I get kind of tired, I need to take a break. And uh, my best score I think is seven and you can laugh, it's okay, it's okay. Because, because I saw the score of many people that did online and they did like hundreds, hundreds. I saw one person who did like, I think 230, and I'm sure there are going to be others who did more, but 230 blinks, I mean, the game is difficult, okay, but blinking 200 times, I mean, I was wor more worrying about blinking 200 times straight than actually, uh, you know, um, thinking about, oh, how hard it is to do it, to even to reach 200, it's very hard. But blinking so much, whew, for me, it was tiring. But overall, uh, I enjoyed it and you know this is amazing seeing uh, uh, Instagram as a gaming platform you know for such games 
and I'm sure that Instagram will add uh, more uh, game-related features um, to Spark AR, so developers can create more uh, engaging, fun, entertaining, and immersive uh, augmented reality uh, uh, selfie games. I think it can be really fun. It doesn't have to be just for selfies. Yeah, of course you can use the real camera uh, to create games and I think people will do this. But there's something of course special about playing a game uh, like this, uh, you know, uh, with the camera facing you uh, and you, your face is a part of the gameplay experience. Now, also mentioned this in my review uh, is that uh, I was actually thinking how amazing it would be if the game played on the face itself. I mean, just think about it. I think it would be like a better fit in general because then the, the bird will appear, for example, maybe on your nose or the middle of your face and the pillars will move from your face uh, from one side to the other on your face will curve on your face structure because Spakira can recognize, uh, you know, the structure of your face uh, and it can just, uh, you know, mesh it and then you put the virtual content that moves on the face mesh itself. So if I was the developer, I would probably create a mode uh, that's called uh, face mode. Uh, we can switch between the standard mode, like the one we have now, and the face mode where you can actually uh, play the game on your on your face. And I think this can be really nice. And uh, I don't know how it's going to be implemented with two players playing uh, at the same time. Uh, maybe each one is going to see um, uh, his or her own face, uh, the character on uh, uh, error, uh, on their face, sorry, uh, separately. So this can be really uh, nice instead, or it's going to be only on one face. I don't know, I mean, this is something, uh, a game design decision. So this is it, this is my first uh, podcast uh, talking about a uh, flying face Instagram filter game and things I like it. Um, and this is it, if you haven't tried this filter yet, uh, follow Dvoshansky's uh, Instagram profile and try this filter out. Okay, so I'm going to link to Dvoshansky's profile in the description so you can uh, check it out and visit uh, his profile and try out this filter. Thanks you watch for uh, listening. Um, and this is it. I see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.